Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, our topic today is uh, uh, threaded fasteners, and uh, these are by far the most frequently used machine element in industry. Um, whatever the specific kind of uh, fastener it may be, uh, one thing will be common and that will be a threaded portion uh, and that threaded portion will take this form. Obviously I'm just going to draw it in a symbolic manner but This is a thread. Now, if I focus on one part of it and draw it in, in a magnified manner, and this we won't be required to do much because our purpose is not to draw the exact thread here, but there are some things that we need to clarify at the start. <coughs> Whatever your fastener may be, it will have this kind of a helical thread and the diameter at the base of the thread that will be called the minor or root diameter dr. Similarly the diameter at the peak or the summit of the thread that will be called the major diameter it's called D and there's an important diameter which is called the pitch diameter uh, and that is uh, in between the major and the minor diameter and <clears throat> that is the diameter at a point where your thread thickness, thickness of the thread is equal to the space between the two threads and this whole distance at some point on one thread to the exact same point on the next thread is called the pitch, pitch P. Now pitch diameter is that diameter at which this thread thickness is equal to the space between two successive uh, two successive threads and this is called pitch diameter dp now we are going to use these this terminology later on now how are uh, threads formed basically Manufacturing of threads takes place mostly in two ways. Number one is uh, rolling, that is cold working, plastic deformation. And you bring a stock of metal into this form in the threaded portion. And the other is cutting or machining. Now, there can be an unthreaded part and a threaded part on any given fastener. Sometimes it's the whole way, uh, it's threaded the whole way. But in the larger uh, threaded fasteners, there's always a shank area, it's called shank, which is unthreaded. And then there is the threaded portion. Now, when we talk about specifications, how do you specify a certain um, threaded fastener? Uh, for example, if you talk about uh, the metric threads which we are going to focus on, then thread is specified in this manner. 
m16 m22 for example this is the this m stands for metric thread 16 this gives you the major diameter which we just talked about here major diameter d and this 2 this is the pitch and we just talked about the pitch also now if it's a single start thread then pitch we have already defined the diameter the definition of pitch that is a pitch is the distance between any two, uh, between one point and its corresponding point on the next thread on the very next thread that is the pitch now if it's a single start thread that is there is just one helical thread uh, there then your pitch is also the distance that uh, your nut or your bolt advances uh, in an axial direction in one revolution so this gives you the pitch here so this completely specifies the thread and uh, there's one more thing why is there need to specify the thread here uh, the, the pitch here why isn't it enough to say m16 that is because for m16 as you can see in your uh, table 8.1 it can be m16 into 2 and it can be m16 into 1.5 now this pitch will be in millimeters this diameter will also be millimeter because we are talking about metric thread here now this is called coarse thread coarse pitch and this is called fine pitch so your m16 bolt or cap screw and i'm going to come on uh, uh, to that uh, classification soon that is available in two pitches if you don't specify anything if you just say it's m16 then this is the standard one you'll be then uh, excused for thinking that you're talking about a pitch of two millimeters now so much for table 8.1 and the uh, different pitches that are available but table 8.1 also contains a lot of other information about uh, threads for example if uh, you are concerned about the stresses in your uh, threaded fastener as we will be very soon then these areas this area and this area they come into play and uh, when we uh, talk about these areas there is the unthreaded area and then there is the area of the threaded portion now for stress calculations and we, you'll see that very soon stress calculations when we talk, talk about the unthreaded area or the shank area that is pretty easy your shank has a certain diameter b and that diameter is the nominal diameter for example for m16 it is 16 for m12 it is 12 millimeters so we simply calculate area and we call it a d simply by the very familiar formula for a circular area now here you will use the major diameter which is also the nominal diameter because you have for m16 it will be 16 millimeters now what about if we talk about uh, the threaded portion that is more interesting area of the threaded portion the consensus is that we take the average of the root diameter and the pitch diameter so we don't quite take this biggest diameter because that would be wrong we take an average of this root diameter and the pitch diameter now for example so uh, uh, just because we are talking about m16 as an example so m16 from table 8 1 as mentioned before uh, actually the footnote footnote under table 8 1 that is 
you can read that the p epistemeter is t minus 0.649519 p and d are these are the formulas for these are the standard uh, <coughs> dimensions for the metric thread d minus 1.226869 p now if you because we are talking about m16 here and let's take coarse thread as an example because your pitch will be different for coarse and fine threads as we have already seen so for coarse thread uh, the pitch will be two again we just saw it two millimeter put two millimeter here and because d is m16 so it is again 16 millimeter so dp and dr can be calculated as 14.700 and 13.546 millimeters now if we take because we have just uh, seen that average of root and pitch diameters are taken so at now t stands for threaded part pi by 4 again simple formula dp plus dr if you calculate it using these you will get 156.65 which is rounded off to 157 millimeter now if you luckily you don't have to do all this exercise because people have done it for you already so if you go to so this was just uh, by way of uh, demonstration you don't actually have to do this calculation now that you can verify that this is already there if you look at table 8 1 and uh, read against m16 there is a column titled tens tensile stress area and what will you find against m16 coarse pitch that is 2 millimeter but 157 millimeter square this is square so this we have verified for the other sizes you don't just you don't even need to go through this calculation just read it off the table so so much for the areas which will come into play very soon and very often now let's talk about uh, another aspect of uh, threaded fasteners and that is uh, how they are used you would have heard about uh, nut bolt arrangement and uh, then there is something called cap bolt and then uh, again machine screw also stud these are studs these are all these are all threaded fasteners and most of the things almost all the things that we will talk about will be common to all these arrangements there will be some differences and uh, we'll see those but most of the theory that will be developed will be applicable to with some minor adjustments applicable to all now let's uh, start with these classifications the most familiar and uh, probably you have heard about it the most is this arrangement where you have uh, a bolt and then you may have a washer here and then you have a nut and some part of, part of the bolt protrudes out from the nut and by this you are basically fastening two plates with a hole in each of the plates for the bolt to pass through there are no threads on these plates these are just holes
so this sort of an arrangement this is bolt this is a nut and one part of this a part of this will be threaded you don't need threads all along you just need thread where the nut will come so if it's a longer size bolt then it doesn't make any sense to have threads here okay so this is one arrangement the other common arrangement is and, and when this arrangement is there you just insert the bolt first and then you tighten the nut you don't tighten this there are reasons for that I mean, at this stage uh, shouldn't uh, go into those reasons but you tighten the nut unless it is not possible to tighten the nut and then you will tighten the bolt also but that is the standard practice now there's another variant of this and that variant uh, again a threaded fastener but now in this case there will be no nut used you have the same plate and similar looking head of the bolt but here we won't call it bolt for traditional reasons this is your again screw but here what happens is that your plate here has a hole but the next plate the other plate that you want to fix together with this plate it has a thread this has a thread and what happens is that this is an example of a blind plate but you could have this threaded part all the way and you have a through threaded part that is also possible and what happens again you have a uh, part of it is unthreaded and part of it is threaded and you have the threads in the this plate all the way in the, in the next plate all the way till this point here we call this not a bolt but a cap bolt or cap screw so the practice here will be that this uh, there's no uh, scope of using a nut here you just use a bolt and you have to tighten this bolt itself now there could be in this case a washer here also like there was a washer here so that can be and cannot be there but this is the arrangement now for this sort of cap bolt you will have different sorts of shapes on the head because you have to tighten this obviously so one of them will be very similar to the bolt that you have used this is the shape of the head uh, although its height is somewhat less than this one but if you look at it it will just look like a, like a bolt and it is a bolt but this is just a convention that if you're not using a nut then it's it becomes a cap bolt or cap screw now it could also have a hexagonal slot here for your wrench commonly called allen key to be inserted and then tightened or it could have a more traditional slot like this and there are many other variants of this so this is another way of using uh, your threaded fasteners and then there's the stud um, the stud is uh, it doesn't have a head this one has a head this one also has a head this one is used for the nut this is used without a nut although i am not aware of any country that uh, makes it against the law to use this with a nut and sometimes people use this with a nut also but then it becomes a bolt from cap screw it becomes a bolt then the stud the stud is actually it again joins two plates for example you have uh, this 
this plate and there is another plate in which there is already a thread so what you uh, you use this sort of a thing you have uh, this stud which passes through this plate because there is and it has thre threads here and on the other side also it has threads and you tighten it here first and then you use a bolt here and tighten this one further again afterwards so this thing inside will take somewhat of this shape a shape like you have threads here no threads here shank area and you have threads here you insert this first tighten it and then you use a nut to tighten this one with the next plate and this other plate this is like this this is one plate and this is the other plate so again this is again another variant so uh, in conclusion you'll have uh, a part with a, a shank part with no threads and a part with a with some threads on them except in one case where you have uh, threads all the way till the head so if this is the head then it may be that you have threads all the way and in this case they are usually called machine screws now again this is a matter of practice because these where you have threads all the way these are relatively smaller sized these are actually cap ports essentially cap screws but they are so small in size that uh, they are uh, threaded all the way and uh, when that is the case then generally they are called machine screws to differentiate them from cap screws or cap ports but essentially they have this similar arrangements for uh, tightening and there can be some other shapes also the summary is that except except the machine screws you will have a threaded part and an unthreaded part. Now this is called LD length of the shank part and this is called LT. This is the length of the threaded part. This is the nomenclature that we follow. These symbols are pretty much standard. This is L. Now this uh, let's uh, unthread it and this is threaded. Now dimensions of all these are available. We just focusing on mainly we'll be focusing on these two here, but again if you understand how to use them then you can understand all other also all uh, others also. Now dimensions of bolts. Will be given in your appendix 29 you can see them the bolts the head size the here also you'll have this sort of a head so this is this called distance across flaps similarly not at this bolt head height these will be this can be seen from uh, appendix 829 similarly dimensions of cap screws 
these can be seen from a 30 then dimensions of nuts you won't be usually using nuts here but you'll be using nuts here so this nut has a slightly different uh, height than this height of the board so this can be consulted from table either very useful tables and finally if there's a washer used like for example there's a washer here a washer here there could be a washer here there could be a washer here so if that is used then dimensions of washers can be seen from table a33 now one thing that uh, you'll not find in these uh, tables is the length these will give you the standard dimensions height of the nut distance across flats all that sort of thing but they'll not give you the length of the bolt, bolt in which it is available and also what part of the length this threaded portion occupies because this is a separate matter and that this is standardization for this and that standardization can very easily be expressed in this way um, you'll be choosing your lens obviously depending on what sort of thicknesses you are basically trying to uh, join th what thickness plates you are trying to join whether you are using a uh, washer or not similarly uh, what is the nut height and that will decide your total length but the total length that you that will result as a result of adding all those things together that that length that you require that is a matter of table a17 preferred sizes you are familiar with with this concept uh, in connection with uh, other topics that you don't have every length of bolt or cap screw available there are some preferred sizes nobody no industry can uh, survive economically if it has to uh, maintain an inventory of all sizes so there are standard sizes so that will be taken from table a17 so the lens will not be here otherwise all information is here so we'll come to that later on now there's also another standard and that is length of the threaded part what portion of the bolt or cap screw will be taken by the threaded part the standard is this it depends on the diameter the, again the principal diameter the nominal diameter or the major diameter plus six millimeter if your length of the bolt total bolt which will be dictated by each application is less than or greater than 125 millimeter if it is greater than that then 125 up until 200 millimeter you'll have twice the diameter plus 12 millimeter because recall that this thread is only required where nut is going to come or where it has to screw into the uh, threaded part now since only a few threads some initial three four five threads they take the load almost all of the load so it doesn't make sense to have a very long threaded link so even if you're uh, and, and that is why the nut has a certain height uh, it's not that if you had a nut of very uh, double the, uh, the thickness then it would be a better joint no because the only the first few threads take up all the load so here also so you actually need a few threads at the end you don't need the whole things threaded so the, uh, and that depends on the total length of uh, the bolt also and if your total bolt size is even bigger than this then you have a bigger threaded part also and that is for all the lengths above 200 millimeter long this is how you you can know what part of this a certain bolt or cap screw is with threads and what part is the 
shank part. Obviously, L minus LT will be the length of this LD. Now, why I'm focusing on this here is that you are going to be required to select a certain length of the bolt for a certain application. And then you'll also have to know what this LD and what the other dimensions are, which I'm going to explain now, because we are going to use this information, not just to join two parts together. That is one part of it. But then you have to calculate the stiffnesses and all that sort of thing, and then the strength. So that will all depend on these dimensions. So it's a small thing, but it's a very important thing. Now, how to, how to find L? We have seen that the lengths will be are available in the preferred sizes table. Yes, but obviously you need to have an idea what is the minimum length you need, and then you will look up the, this table for the next higher size or something like that. So, and once that L is decided, then LT, LD, everything will be decided. But how to cal this calculate this L? That is very important, and uh, for that. Uh, let me draw this figure again and uh, again this time I'm just going to focus on the nut and the nut bolt arrangement and the cap screw. Now here you have uh, this, then you have a washer here. And then you have a nut and some part is then protruding. This is the threaded part and some part of the bolt comes out of the nut. Bolt head. This is the nut. Now, the plates that you, you are joining together, this is the first, uh, this is the plate number one and this is the plate number two. <clears throat> These are the plates, plate one and plate two. Now there's something called the, the grip length. Length L. The grip length L, small l, for this sort of an arrangement is simply everything between the bolt head and the nut. If there's a washer, then that is included. Everything that is gripped, uh, as the name uh, implies, everything that is gripped is. Uh, included. Now this uh, grip length is going to be very important for your stiffness calculations later on. So this is a very important thing to know apart from all the other uh, variables. So this is another thing that we have added. Now what we do here is because we don't need the bolt to just finish inside this, this nut. It should uh, whatever the number of threads in the nut, nut are it should engage all those threads and in fact it should come out from the other side two or three threads two to three threads if they come out uh, it's better even if it is just uh, the right length till the end of the nut that is all right but that is rarely the case for safety reasons you would like your, uh, your your bolt to come out of the nut from the other side maybe it's a two or three threads length long but uh, you you'd like these two to three thre threads to come out. Now how we select the length? Very simple. The length again recall you need this is the total length. So you need this from this to this so that this comes out of the thread somewhat. So what you do is simply you need the grip length plus the height of nut. Like 
that is L plus H and you should say that this should be greater than this. Now a practical approach is simply this that um, let me let me write it down here grip length height of nut now let me reiterate that grip length includes a washer if there is a washer now and of course the two plates are included now a good thing a, a good way to uh, get this l is you just add these two to, together you will get a number you just add these two L and H together and then, then you'll get a number. Let's say you get 45.8. Now you're not going to find this 48.8 or whatever this number is, length uh, bolt in your A70, table A70. You'll go for the next higher size. So for example, 50. Or if it's uh, 51 or 52 then maybe the next higher size is 55 so you select that one and by selecting that one you'll automatically satisfy this that there'll be some part that comes out of the although it's not needed for any strength calculations this strength doesn't play a part here but you are sure at least that the bolt is not uh, it's not a case of uh, the bolt not utilizing all the contact threads inside the nut so that this simply gives you the length required now when it comes to cap screws this is not a bolt when it comes to cap screws this calculation is slightly different first of all there is a plate with a hole in it the first plate has a hole just like the plates here but the second plate doesn't have a hole but it has screw already in it because your cap screw doesn't need a doesn't use a nut it screws in the plate directly now this plate could be like this or this can be all the way through but in either case you're not going to use a, a nut now when you use your uh, bolt here you'll bolt your bolt will finish somewhere along here and uh, maybe the threaded part is this part uh, maybe the thread part is more than this this is the threaded part and this is the then the shank and then you have here a washer and then a bolt head. Now, this is your situation. Now, in this case, what is the grip length? And how do you select the length? This length could be, this could end here, and this could end here, or this could go even further. What, what is the grip length for this? Grip length here was very simple. Now, again, I'll reiterate that. Uh, not all the threads uh, contribute to taking the load. Only the first three, four, five threads, they take all the load. So you don't need this uh, engaged length of the male and the female thread uh, beyond a certain level. Obviously, you need a certain minimum, but not beyond that. Beyond that. So it's more of a matter of practice and experiment, which tells us some things. And I'm going to summarize them here now this this is the d we know this d what this d is now this is t1 thickness of the plate one this is thickness of the plate two and this is thickness of the washer now our grip length in this case is this Our grip length is H. This is H. H is thickness one, plate, thickness of plate one, and any thickness of washer if the washer is there. H. So we are talking about the grip length L. L is equal to H 
प्लस डी ओवर टू और एच प्लस टी टू ओवर टू टी टू इज दिस वन नाउ विच वन इट विल टेक विच एवर इज स्मॉलर सो आर ग्रेट लेंथ विल बी सम लेंथ हेयर सम लेंथ एल बिकॉज वी डोंट एक्चुअली वी डोंट नीड बियॉन्ड दिस ग्रेप लेंथ वी डोंट नीड टू हैव हैव अ Uh, have the length of this uh, cap screw beyond this it doesn't help us but this is what is required so that is simply h plus a certain quantity and that quantity dictate is dictated by the ma major diameter and the thickness of the second plate the first plate is included in h now if this uh, t2 is greater than d then you will take this one and if this d is greater than t2 then you will take this one this is the grip length and in this case l the length of the bolt that you need must be greater than this l so for for cap screws this is your minimum length for uh, bolt this was your minimum length but in either case when you go to find for example in this case you again will get a certain number like uh, 36.2 or something like that but when you go to table a17 then it is very high, unlikely that you'll get that number in the preferred sizes so then you go on and find the next available size so this and this table a17 preferred sizes and then you select the next that is bigger available length hence you'll have some part protruding here hence your grip length is only this your your bolt of this size would have sufficed but it will because it won't be available there most probably so you'll get some some part which is beyond what is necessary so this works for both and the same thing can be extended to uh, if you're talking about studs and all that sort of thing and machine screws, essentially the same thing.